as professionals. Um, so we are creators. Um, we are creators through collaboration. Um, and from my perspective, uh, for the agency, uh, you have to ask the question of like, is you know, is this good enough for them? Are these people qualified to make it for them? Um, will it make a difference for for our clients? How do you guys make yourself stand out to those? We're clients? trying every day, Chris. Every day. <laughs> yeah, it's big, big concepts. You know, we're of the belief like if you're going to build the next great agency, you have to you have to throw out really big, bold ideas. Otherwise. Like, I don't know how else you're supposed to get the attention of people. So we're, we're working on that every day. We got a long way to go till it's probably going to be recognized, um, as we want it to be, as our team deserves it to be. Uh, but yeah, big ideas yeah. and presenting them in an articulate way to the, to the group that's hearing it out. Yeah. There's two ways to go about that. I mean, like we, we, we've been dealing with it for a little bit and, um, you know, clients a lot of times, oftentimes have, uh, uh, an idea of what they want, specifically smaller companies, I would say, like they, I, I, you know, they have an idea of what they want. Oh, we need, we need to do a, a, a campaign centered around uh, our new website launch. And I want, I want content for our website. And, but we're advisors. So ultimately it's up to us to lead them in a direction that would be the best way to approach their needs. And, try to amplify those uh, ideas as much as we can. So it's appropriate for their business, but it's also moving the needle for them. So it's a bit of a balance because some, you know, some clients are like, this is what I want. This is how I want it. Don't, don't go outside that lane. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that won't help us stand out too much. Obviously we can execute on that and make a really good piece of content and hopefully it does well. Um, but when you're pitching, and when you're talking to a bigger company that probably has multiple agencies working with them, oftentimes they do have multiple agencies working with them on a variety of things. Um, how do we stand out as a smaller agency when they're working with Leo Burnett or Edelman? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're not going to stand out by saying, okay, we'll do what you want and execute it really well. Edelman and Leo Burnett are executing it really well. You know, like they're, they're also doing that. So we can execute it very well, but is our idea original? And is our idea going to move the needle for them? And that's what, that's what we're really trying to do in the last like six months is really, uh, really amplifying what our agency can do from a creativity and originality standpoint. So we can push out uh, really big, bold ideas that help the company actually move the needle. I mean, how many pieces of content do you see that just like kind of sit there and you made the piece of content and it's like, oh, good job. You made the piece of content. Um, yeah. What's going to help? What's going to gather attention? That's a struggle. Like that's what, that's why it's hard. There's so many creative and talented people doing really cool stuff. How do you stand out and, and say, this is original, this is our idea, it's working? Hard. Well, I think that is that can be considered how you stand out is original and authentic content. Because I think some of the content now is so curated to the point where it's not even – the people making it don't actually believe in what they're making, I think. Some of – what, not all of it, but I just think some of content has gotten fake, and I think authenticity is actually kind of a – competitive advantage now. Absolutely. I also, I will say like storytelling too is powerful in and of itself. Like a good story mm -hmm. is a good story. So, you know, if you, if you have a client that has a really good customer story and they really help this, uh, they really help this one customer build their business, whatever the case is, you're doing a customer testimonial. Like there's a, there could be a good story there just in and of itself by talking to the person. Mm -hmm. uh, but Again, that's that's tough to do all the time, like and and tell it really well and make sure that it's original. Um, so I would say, again, it's just trying to find, figure out what about this idea can turn into a little extra creative, a little more original, a little more truly authentic. So it's it again, it's really hard um, trying to figure out what will help move the needle and what ultimately they'll go with if you're pitching it to a client. Mm -hmm. Uh, storytelling is really hard, I think. And like telling a good story is even, you know, is very difficult. What are your guys' principles or kind of steps to telling, you know, a client's story? Definitely starts with having, get to know them really well. That's the front end of it. It just takes time. The creative process is real. Um, something 
we didn't fully appreciate at the beginning. Uh, it takes time to come up with good ideas. You mm -hmm. literally have to focus on, you know, what what the client goals are, what the resources you have at hand. Um, it's a com it's complex. I mean, it's not com it's not like rocket science, but uh, it's not easy. But telling it in an effective way, I think, is the hard part because everyone has this story, but making it attractive and um, inspirational or whatever you want to say is the hard part. What's the best piece of content you've ever seen, Chris? The best piece of content. Whether it's like a documentary, movie, advertisement, give me like an example of what you think is like, that was really good. Um, I love the documentary on Netflix, The Alpinist. Okay, I've seen that. Uh, go to the credits. Yeah. Next time. Yeah, no, know. I know what you're saying. There are so many people. <laughs> It yeah. was not just one person's idea. And so I think that's also a, a flaw sometimes of, uh, I think just generally people, like you, you want to take an idea. Like I think we hear stories, sensationalized story, like Steve Jobs, he brought the, the iPhone. Yeah, he, he was the visionary yeah. leading it through, right? But there were so many people with their hands on that, that contributed mm -hmm. to that. And so uh, same with the Alpinist and all, all the great things we see in the world, it's probably not by, done by one person. And right. I think that's one thing to really recognize that I think uh, I certainly didn't appreciate um, earlier on when we started the business is how much talented people you need around you to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Uh, and for us specifically, like when you're creating content or a campaign for someone or even our original content, how many people, how many talented people you need to make sure that it's good? Because um, I could do it myself, but it's going to suck. So, uh, seriously, like it'll suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's that, like that famous kind of quote about like entrepreneurship that says like go faster alone, but further together. Right. Um, yes, we've, said that that, we've said that to each other. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys... well, we'll turn. Yeah, you know, we'll turn. Hey, remember that one quote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is because there's all those kind of like I feel like saying you're an entrepreneur and being a business owner now is like super like sexy and like trendy, but it's what do you guys, <laughs> yeah. But like, what are like the misconceptions that you've noticed, you know, being a business owner, being an entrepreneur? Go for it, Chris. Uh, I would say, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to grow. That That's a big mm -hmm. question. Like, yeah, you're you can certainly be an entrepreneur, and, uh, you know, like you're a sole proprietor, but that, yeah, but running that business, it's a business, but that's a much different business than what, like us, if, if I'm, if I'm doing the day to day work for the clients as a business, we're going backwards of the intent of like what we're trying to grow. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we're trying to, we're trying to have a scaled out business uh, for a number of reasons, but one of which is servicing the client better because we can get better people because they're better than me at servicing the client. Right. And they're better than, than, than Will at servicing the client. That's the intent. That's the type of business we're trying to build opposed to someone who just, which is however someone wants to do it, where they are the ones who provide the services as an individual. Yeah. The expectations matter on like what the person's going for, for their business on yeah. misconceptions. In regard to yeah. entrepreneurship and business ownership. That's I would just say it's really it's Starting a business. <laughs> Someone says, are you starting a business? Like, oh, what kind of business? Like, what's the intent of what you want to do with it? And it evolves. And it evolves. Oh, yeah. But uh, I think people are too smart sometimes. And when you're, I think when you think about things logically uh, about, say, starting a business um, and you think like step one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, I need to do these things to make sure that my business is going to work. Like these are, this is going to work. Um I would just say like that might trick you out and make you not want to be an entrepreneur because like you're realizing how many things like it's overwhelming how much, I mean, we have an overwhelming plate of things that we want right now, but it's to do kinda, list is long. Yeah. The to do, to do list is very long. And if you start thinking in that way versus like just starting to do stuff and realize that you're going to mess up um, and just, you're going to, you're going to trick yourself into not wanting to do it um, because it's yeah. too it's it's hard not to it's hard not to trick yourself into being like well I don't want to be an entrepreneur anymore uh, it's it's very hard um, yeah 
you know, we have to, we're a small agency in Chicago. There are Edelman's based in Chicago. Leo Burnett has a, a very big presence. There's a lot of good agencies here. Um, you know, Chris and I have to fight and claw to get a, a pitch with a Fortune 500 company. Like we have to claw for that. It takes months, years sometimes to just